So right now we're looking at an AP Physics C E&M problem, specifically 2009, question number one. Um, this problem deals with uh, both electric potentials and electric fields and how they're related to each other. So we're going to be looking at some of that. Um, we're also going to be looking at, in this problem, uh, a tiny bit of Gauss's law and then finding out charge, to, charge amounts from Gauss's law as well. So it's got a little bit of everything in it. Uh, really good problem. Now this problem does revolve around uh, knowing some calculus, specifically a derivative, um, and that's what we're going to be doing in the beginning here. So brush up on your derivative rules. Uh, this derivative isn't bad, it is just a polynomial derivative, so nothing too difficult there, but it is something to uh, keep in mind whenever you're doing this. Okay. So what we've got is a spherically symmetric charge distribution. It's got a net positive charge of Q0. Um, and it's distributed within radius big R. And let's keep this clear real quick. This is a spherically symmetric charge distribution. So this is both, uh, it's like a full sphere there. Um, we're not just saying it's on the surface of a conductor. It's a full spherically symmetric, so inside and outside. Um, its electric potential, V, as a function of the distance R from the center of the sphere is given by these uh, two equations right here. And we have one for r less than r and for r greater than r. So this is what we're going to have to be playing with up here a lot. Um, these two functions given to us in the beginning. And uh, we're going to start off by, for the following two regions, inside and outside, radius r, big R, um, we're going to have to indicate the direction of the E field and derive an expression for its magnitude. OK, let's do it. So if we want an electric field, from a potential. And since we're going with r less than r first, we're going to be using this one up here. If we want an electric field from a potential, we need to know that the electric field is equal to the negative derivative of the voltage, the potential, with respect to r. Okay, So this gives us um, what that electric field is, and this is technically E of R here because it's based off of that little radius where we are at. So we need to take the derivative of this function with respect to this little R here. And that means everything else in that function is just a constant. And if you remember when we take derivatives, a little flashback to math, I can have a number here like 417x squared. And if I'm taking that with respect to x, then all I need to do is look at this exponent for the polynomial. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to bring it down in front. So bring that two in front. So it'd be like two times 417, and then subtract one from that exponent. So two minus one is just one. Okay. Um, so that's how we're taking derivatives here for simple polynomials. We're just pretty much the beginning of your calculus knowledge. So let's write out what we've got here, minus the derivative of, and then we've got this q over 4 pi epsilon naught r, q over 4 pi epsilon naught r. I'm probably just going to call that the constant in a second. And then I've got a minus 2 plus 3. Now I'm going to make my life a little bit easier here. Instead of placing that r squared outside, um, or the, the quantity r over r squared outside, I'm just going to write this as r squared over big R squared. We're going to see why I do that momentarily. This is all respect to R. So when I'm taking the derivative of this, I don't need to worry about this constant at the moment. Um, it is distributed to both of these. So it's just a constant. It's just a number. I could pull it out. Um, I just need to worry about taking this derivative with respect to r. So really what I'm concerned about is taking the derivative of this in here. Okay. Now if I do this, if I take the derivative of negative 2, I get nothing out of it. Okay. So I'm going to write this as this constant here. I'm just going to call this big C. So this constant times, well, the derivative of negative 2 is 0 plus, and now let's take the derivative of that 3r squared over r squared. Well, I'm going to get the 3. And then I'm going to bring down the 2. Okay, so there's my 2. Now it's going to be r to the power of, well, 2 minus 1. It's just r to the first over r squared. 
that was the derivative. Right here, that was the derivative we had to do. That was it. Pretty straightforward. So now we could just write this out as the constant q over 4 pi eps naught big R times, well, 3 times 2 is 6. There's a little r. So there's a 6. There's a little r. And there's an r squared in the denominator. r times r squared is r cubed. OK? And that's what we have there. So 6 q naught r over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed is the electric field inside this sphere here. Okay, so at some distance inside the sphere, that's what you would have. And that field is pointing radially inward here as to what we're looking at. Okay, so that field is pointing radially inward. Uh, we've got positive charges there. Those positive charges are pointing uh, radially inward when we do this. If we look at part two when we do this, um, it's the same idea. Uh, we need to take the derivative, but this time of the second function. So we're going to have that the E field is once again the negative dV dr. And uh, this is going to equal, oh, did I miss a? Yeah, 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 okay. So just real quick, I missed something up here. There was a negative sign. Um, this was a negative up here because of this negative, but this just means inward, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, I just missed that, but it, that's where we got the inward from. Sorry. Okay, uh, for the next one, minus dvdr, we're gonna get q over four pi eps naught little r. And in this case, all of these are constants. So what I'm really taking the derivative of in a way is uh, I'm trying to take the derivative of uh, 1 over r, which is the same as r to the negative first. Well, when we take something like r to the negative first, we're going to pull that exponent down. So negative r and then minus 1 from it to the negative 2. So that's equal to negative 1 over r squared. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have the negative by the negative turns positive. And then we're going to get the constant q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Okay, so that's our derivative we're looking at there. Because this is positive, we're pointing radially outward on this one. Up here, this was a negative on the outside really brought a negative there, but we don't care about it if we're just looking for the magnitude, so we didn't care about it. But that negative there meant that this one up top was inward, the positive out here meant that it was uh, pointing outward. Okay, so just real two quick derivatives that we had there. They're just simple polynomials um, that we did in order to get that. So right there, uh, we just met ourselves five points on that first piece of the problem. That's a third of an AP Physics C question. Uh, for part B, though, we need to derive an expression for the enclosed charge that generates the electric field in that region. And anytime we're thinking of the enclosed charge, we need to be thinking of Gauss's law. So we need to be thinking about the closed integral of the electric field by some area. And that's going to equal the charge enclosed within that Gaussian uh, shape divided by epsilon naught. So this here is that charge enclosed we're looking for. So what we need to do here is we need to take, for our region, r, little r less than r, big R, we need to take, given a spherical shape, we need to take a spherical Gaussian sphere um, and uh, use that area of the sphere. So we're going to have an electric field, and then this integral here is really just the closed integral of the area of the shape you've chosen, which for us is just a sphere. So we don't even have to take a real integral. We can just say it's a sphere. The area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And it's got to be an r squared there because you need meters squared for an area. Okay, So if you forget if it's squared or cubed, easy way to get that. Uh, and this just has to equal the charge enclosed 
divided by epsilon naught. And remember, this is the charge enclosed inside this sphere itself. So at this point, uh, we just need to say, hey, look, we know what the electric field is on the inside from above. And we're going to remember that there was the negative here. We've got a negative 6 q naught r over 4 pi eps naught big R cubed times 4 pi r squared equals, I'll extend that, equals the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. And at this point, we can start dividing a lot of stuff out, simplifying things, making things a little bit easier to look at. Um, we note that the eps naughts uh, divide out here. Um, uh, the 4 pi and 4 pi go away. That is very nice. Uh, and that looks to be it. The only other thing we can do is we can combine these r's into an r cubed so that we see that the charge enclosed will equal for us a negative 6 q naught r cubed, that's little r, over big R cubed. Woo! Pretty straightforward. Nice Gauss's law. So that's our answer for that one. Uh, for outside of uh, the sphere, or outside of the sphere now, um, uh, we know what this answer has to be uh, right off the bat, but we should try to prove what it is. Um, we know that this entire sphere has a net positive charge distribution of q naught, so this answer needs to be q naught here. If I enclose my entire distribution of charges and it has a total charge of q naught, then everything enclosed inside of my Gaussian sphere will be q naught. Um, so that's that's all we're doing for this. You know the answer. Our charge enclosed here needs to be q naught, okay, and specifically positive because that's what we had before. To prove this and to fully get this, um, we need to do another Gauss's law. In this case, we'll just quickly kind of rewrite things. We're going to have e times the 4 pi r squared equals q enclosed over eps naught, and then all we need to do is replace this electric field with what we obtained before. And what we obtained before with that electric field when we wrote it was a q naught over 4 pi epsilon naught over 4 pi eps naught r squared. This will be multiplied by the sphere 4 pi r squared equals q enclosed over eps naught. Let's make this easier to look at. Eps naught, eps naught, 4 pi, 4 pi, r squared, r squared. Hey, look. Q enclosed equals Q naught because you've enclosed the entire thing. So we knew what that answer had to be before we ever did anything. Okay? And we quickly proved what it was. So, whoo, that was nice. What is going on here? Go away. Okay. Um, so is there any charge on the surface of the sphere? Well, there almost has to be a charge on the surface of the sphere. Um, Inside of the sphere, we have this negative 6q r cubed over r cubed, and it's a negative quantity, but our net is a positive quantity here. So we have to have something on the surface. If inside is negative, but the whole thing has to be positive, then right on that surface, right on that edge condition, there has to be some amount of charge there. Okay? So we can quickly answer yes to part right there, and for that we get a point. Um, to figure out what that amount is, then we need to say this. Look, if we were at r equals r, then the surface charge, q surface, plus the charge on the inside, okay, plus the charge on the inside has to equal q naught. Right? And we are at the point r equals r here. So pretty much our charge on the surface has to equal q naught minus the charge we have on the inside. 
And the charge we have on the inside is this minus six Q naught R cubed over R cubed. So there's our minus, well, it's a minus of a minus here, right? Because that charge is negative. And there's a six Q naught, and then it would be R cubed over R cubed. But in this case, we are at R equals R. So we're gonna turn this little r into a big r here. And when we do that, we see that these two terms divide out. And what we have is q minus the negative six q naught, which this is really addition, and we get seven q naught. And that is the charge on our surface. We realized it had to be something simply because if we've got a negative on the inside, but the whole thing has to be positive, that surface edge has to have a charge, and that's how we can quickly get it. For the last part here, uh, we're just asked to kind of sketch a graph. Um, uh, how would a force act on a positive test charge in the regions of R less than R and R greater than R? Uh, assume that a force directed radially outward is positive. So this is gonna be out up here. This is gonna be in down here. Well, let's just go back and remember real quick that a force on a charged particle can just be thought of as a charge, that's our positive charge, multiplied some, by some electric field. So we really just need to look at our electric field here and see how this acts. Specifically, we wanna see what the little r does in these equations. So if we go all the way back up to the top where we did this, um, we've got a minus six q naught over four pi epsilon naught big R cubed. And really what we wanna see here is that this little r is to the first power, which means it's linear. So we're gonna have a straight line here. And then since this is a negative value here, given by the negative that popped up, that inward. So we're gonna be going inward at a linear rate. So down here, uh, we can just start at zero and we can say, hey, look, we're going inward at a linear rate. So I like that. Uh, once we hit that boundary condition though, things have changed up. Um, now we need to go back up look at our second piece here. Now we're going in a positive direction. So that is outward. That's what we answered right here, radially outward. And it's going as r squared, or rather one over r squared. And uh, just a quick little sketch. We know that one over r squared gives us a graph that kind of looks like that. So down here, we're gonna immediately pop up to be going outward, and we're gonna have some graph that kind of slides down like that. And we're not gonna to touch that x-axis because the one over r squared never actually makes it there, um, but we just get very, very, very close to it over a long period of time. And there is a discontinuity right there. So look at that. So the big thing in this problem was being able to take a derivative in part A uh, and part B, Gauss's law, Gauss's law, Gauss's law, Gauss's law. If you don't know how to do Gauss's law, what we're talking about there, check some of the other videos out we've got in this playlist. And then uh, question C was just a little bit of total charge and then just graphing what we've done. So nothing too bad back in 2009. Uh, with that though, this question is finished.